And on this IK Vancers, when will Apple go to 3 nanometers? Next on my Apple shopping list, when will the iPhone be truly full screen? Data over MagSafe, rugged Apple Watches, camera apps, and iOS breaking home kit? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. So here we go, let's get straight into it with the first question from Evan Rogers. We continue to gain clarity on TSMC's 3 nanometer fabrication, N3, and it should achieve volume production in July or August this year. It normally takes 6 to 12 months for the products to be introduced afterwards with an absolute minimum of 12 weeks. What do you think will be the first Apple chip to use N3? Will we have to wait for A17 in the fall of 2023 or could the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch refresh in the spring of 2023 see its adoption? So I'm going to be honest with you here, I'm probably going to annoy you but I think it is going to be the A17. I don't see Apple designing chips for one process and then building them on another. So we could see the A16, which will be coming out at the end of this year using that process. However, the amount of chips that will need to be produced for that uh, makes it seem un likely to me it might be that we get a four nanometer process for the a16 the a15 that we have right now is probably what's going to be the cause at the core of the macbook pros 14 and 16 inches for 2023 and that's because the m2 architecture will be based on the uh, the five nanometer process that we have right now which is what's inside the iphone 13 that is the most likely i would say um i would say that we are likely to see uh three nanometer not until next year unfortunately randomness r asks ik advances thank you for the feedback ik advances what is the next product you are looking to buy uh, so for me um a, a, certainly on the mac side of things uh, it's going to be a laptop of some sort because right now I mean, since 2011 was the last time I bought a laptop. My wife has the M1 MacBook Air, which we did the unboxing of on the release day, um, and she absolutely loves it. I would like to have a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro uh, or a MacBook, depending on what comes out with M2. Uh, I think that's probably what I will be next looking to buy, uh, budget permitting. If you'd like to sponsor us, please get in touch. Randomness R asks, I gave answers, there are rumours that the 2024 iPhones will have the face ID and front facing camera under the display making a truly full screen iPhone. What are the chances of it happening? I was thinking of buying the iPhone 14 Pro, but I might hold out. What do you think? Also, could that iPhone be completely portless? So I guess at this point, if we're talking about the iPhone for 2024, we're talking about the iPhone 16? Um, iPhone 16? iPhone 15? 15, 16, 16. I can't count. Uh, so we're talking about the iPhone 16 and you're worrying about whether you should buy a 14 Pro right now. I would say go for it. I wouldn't hold out on something that may be a rumor. I don't think that we're going to see these under display cameras or under display face ID anytime soon. Uh, and I know that's not really that soon. It's a couple of years out. But at the moment, nobody can make a good camera that sits under the display because the display gets in the way of it. That's the problem. Like anything that you put behind a display that is blocking some light coming in is going to give you a worse image. Uh, and it looks like for this year, at least, I, uh, Apple is really focusing on having better photos from the FaceTime cameras and uh, the, the Face ID stuff. Um, so it makes no sense to me that they would put it under the display for no real reason other than it looks a bit sleeker. Um, I don't care about that. I've, I've got to be honest with you. I don't care about a notch. I don't care about it becoming a couple of holes. I don't really care about any of that stuff. I want to get really good images from my phone. That is more important to me than uh, a tidier top edge, if I'm honest. Uh, could it be completely portless? I think there's a reasonable chance that next year we might get completely portless and that is because of all of the legislation that's going through the EU right now. Uh, I don't think that Apple's going to put USB-C on there because it'll only be on there for a year maybe. Um, I think they're probably just going to go completely portless and go straight to MagSafe. That would be my guess. And it still confuses me that the EU wants Apple to definitely go to USB-C on there, but they're happy for MagSafe or exclusively wireless charging for watches, mm, but nothing else. Is that is that? Am I confused? Is that the rules? Why is a watch allowed to have its own charger, but nothing else? Answers on a postcard. 
Randomness asks, IK answers, does or will the MagSafe charger be able to transfer data? I currently have an iPhone 11 Pro Max and was thinking of getting one. Does it even stick to and charge the iPhone 11 Pro Max? It will it will charge it, it won't stick to it specifically, although there are cases out there that will help to align it with the uh, the iPhone 11. But the iPhone 11 and the 11 Pro Max don't have MagSafe as such as a feature. What they do have is uh, Qi wireless charging, which allows it to charge through the back, and MagSafe does comply with Qi, it's just that the magnet ring is there to align it to make sure that it's in the right place. Um, yeah, you can grab a case that has uh, a MagSafe ring inside it, uh, but it will only charge still at 5 watts because that's what Qi allows you to do. And also, edit time, Dave, you have to remember that there's actually two parts to a question when you're answering it. So, uh, in terms of the uh, wireless transfer stuff, uh, it's been postulated that they could potentially use um, the same technology in U1, which we already know is in the phones. Um, but it could use U1 in the puck to actually do really, really fast transfers, like way faster than Wi-Fi over very short distances. That could be the way they do it. Back to the video. Randomness R asks, I gave answers. How big do you think the third Apple Watch will be this year? I'm assuming the biggest size will be the rugged version. I think we've already seen the rugged version. I think the rugged version of the iPhone that we'd been hearing about for all of these years is called the iPhone 7. Um, we heard all of the rumours about the flat-sided iPhone coming out last year. Uh, then there were delays. We heard that it was delayed. And then we saw this completely different phone, which Apple kept describing as being the most hard-wearing iPhone ever. I think that's what it is. I think the flatter-faced version is still going to come. I think that might now be the 8. That might have what was going to be the S7 chip inside of it, because... As we all know, the iPhone 7 basically just has the A uh, the S6 chip inside of it, but with a different badge on it. They changed nothing about the chip. Uh, the internals don't match up with anything that we'd seen. So I think that uh, the biggest size that we're going to get is the one that we already have. I think the third size might be smaller. Um, I really don't see why anyone would want a bigger watch. This is already pretty massive, and they've gone bigger than this already. Yuri Tech asks, do you use a third-party camera app for your iPhones? If so, which camera app do you use for your videos? Uh, yeah, I use um, Filmic Pro. This is the camera app that I use. And it lets me basically put everything on the screen. All of my controls are down here so that I don't have to uh, be doing it from on the phone, which is up there. And I'm using the main cameras on it, which basically means that everything looks better. Um, yes, you can use the iPhone camera app and use your watch as a monitor for it. But it's not as good. Uh, it tends to be a bit laggy. That's why I use this one. Uh, Filmic Pro also lets me use uh, log color grading and stuff like that so that I'm able to then pull out a lot more color after the fact in the edit. Evan Rogers asks, IK Vances, have you seen any of the reports that the latest iOS beta is breaking HomeKit? I use HomeKit bulbs in my place and after updating the iOS overnight to 15.5 beta 2, the lights are either blinking or randomly flickering. I hadn't seen anything about this, but it's a little bit concerning, but this is the joys of using beta software. Unfortunately, there will be bugs, and that's kind of the point, is that we are there. If we're using the betas, you assume a certain amount of uh, personal liability, I guess, to say that you understand that there will be bugs, and part of the reason that we're using that stuff is to find these bugs. Now, I don't use a lot of HomeKit stuff. Um, it sounds almost like, though, that the flickering... Is it on all of your lights or is it on certain lights? Because LED lights have a way of just flickering once they're getting towards the end of their life. It might possibly be that you actually just have a uh, an LED that's dying. And coincidentally, uh, it started about the same time that you downloaded this beta software. I'm not saying that that's the case, but just uh, bear that in mind if it's not happening with a lot of lights. But yeah, this is one of the one of the things when you use beta software, you are kind of opening yourself up to that. And uh, it's unfortunate, but it is kind of par for the course. Uh, so hopefully that's something that will get fixed quite quickly in the next beta. You might have a couple of weeks of flickery lights, though. And that's it for this show. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, don't forget, leave any iCav answers you've got for your uh, next... No, what? No? And don't forget, you can leave your iCare answers down in the comments section with the hashtag, and I'll answer them on a future show. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.